THE BREMEN TOWN MUSICIANS An honest farmer had once a donkey that had been a faithful servant to him a great many years, but was now growing old and every day more and more unfit for work. His master, therefore, was tired of keeping him and began to think of putting an end to him. But the donkey, who saw that some mischief was in the wind, slyly sneaked away and began his journey towards the great town of Bremen. For there, thought he, I may become a famous musician. Perhaps I'll play a lute. A lute is an old-fashioned instrument, kind of like a round, fat guitar. After the donkey had traveled a little way, he spied a dog lying by the roadside and panting as if he were tired. "'What makes you pant and breathe so, my friend?' said the donkey. "'Alas,' said the dog, "'my master was going to knock me on the head "'because I am old and weak "'and can no longer make myself useful to him in hunting. "'So I ran away. "'But what can I do to earn my livelihood?' "'Listen,' said the donkey, "'I am going to Bremen Town to become a famous musician. "'Suppose you go with me. "'I will play the lute, and you shall beat the kettle drum.' "'The dog said he was willing, and they jogged on together. "'They had not gone far before they saw a cat "'sitting in the middle of the road and making a most rueful, sad face. "'Tell me, my good lady cat,' said the donkey, "'what's the matter with you?' You look quite unhappy. Ah, me, said the cat. How can one be in good spirits when one's life is in danger? Because I am beginning to grow old and had rather lie at my ease by the fire than run about the house after the mice, my mistress laid hold of me and was going to drown me. And though I have been lucky enough to get away from her, I do not know how I can feed myself. Oh, said the donkey, by all means go with us to Bremen Town. You are a good nighttime musician and may make your fortune as a famous violinist. The cat was pleased with the thought and joined the company. Soon afterwards, as they were passing by a farmyard, they saw a rooster perched upon a gate and screaming out loudly with all his might and main. Bravo, said the donkey. Goodness gracious, you make a wonderful noise. Tell me, what is all this about? Why, said the rooster, I was just now saying that we should have fine weather for our washing day, and yet my mistress and the cook don't thank me for my pains, but threaten to cut off my head tomorrow and make soup of me for the guests that are coming on Sunday. Heaven forbid, said the donkey. Come with us, Master Chanticleer the rooster. It will be better, at any rate, than staying here to have your head cut off. Besides, who knows? If we care to play and sing in tune, we may get up some kind of a concert. So come along with us. With all my heart, said the rooster. So they all four went on happily together. They could not, however, reach the great city the first day. So when night came on, they went into a wood to sleep. The donkey and the dog laid themselves down under a great oak tree, and the cat climbed up into the branches, while the rooster, thinking that the higher he sat, the safer he should be, flew up to the very top of the tree, and then, according to his custom, before he went to sleep, he looked out on all sides of him to see that everything was well. In doing this, he saw far off something bright and shining, and calling to his companions, said, There must be a house no great way off, for I see a light. If that be the case, said the donkey, we had better change our quarters, for our lodging is not the best in the world. Besides, added the dog, I should not be the worse for a bone or two or a bit of meat. So they walked off together towards the spot where Chanticleer the rooster had seen the light. And as they drew near, it became larger and brighter, till they at last came close to a house in which a gang of robbers lived. The donkey, being the tallest of the company, marched up to the window and peeped in. 
"'Well, donkey,' said Chanticleer, "'what do you see?' "'What do I see?' replied the donkey. "'Why, I see a table spread with all kinds of good things, "'and robbers sitting round it, making merry and having fun.' "'That would be a noble lodging for us to stay in,' said the rooster. "'Yes,' said the donkey, "'if we could only get in.' So they consulted together how they should contrive to get the robbers out. And at last they hit upon a plan. The donkey placed himself upright on his hind legs, with his forefeet resting against the window. The dog got up on the donkey's back. The cat scrambled up to the dog's shoulders, and the rooster flew up and sat upon the cat's head. When all was ready, a signal was given, and they began their music. The donkey brayed and hee-hawed. The dog barked and howled. The cat meowed. The rooster crowed. And then they all broke through the window at once and came tumbling into the room amongst the broken glass with a most hideous clatter, a terrible noise. The robbers, who had been more than a little frightened by the opening concert, had now no doubt that some frightful hobgoblin monster had broken in upon them, and the robbers all scampered away just as fast as they could. Now that the coast was clear and there was nothing left to fear, our travelers soon sat down and gobbled up what the robbers had left, with as much eagerness as if they had not expected to eat again for a month. As soon as they had satisfied their hunger, they put out the lights, and each once more sought out a sleeping place to his own liking. The donkey laid himself down upon a heap of straw in the yard. The dog stretched himself upon a rug behind the door. The cat rolled herself up on the hearth close to the warm ashes of the fire, and the rooster perched upon a beam on the very tip-top of the house. And as they were all rather tired with their journey, they soon fell asleep. But about midnight, when the robbers saw from afar off that the lights were out and that all seemed quiet, they began to think that they had been in too great a hurry to run away, and one of them, who was bolder and braver than the rest, went to see what was going on. Finding everything still and quiet, he marched into the kitchen and groped about in the dark till he found a match in order to light a candle. And then... When the robber spied the glittering, fiery eyes of the cat, he made a mistake and mistook them for burning coals in the fireplace, and he held the match close to them to light it. But the cat, not understanding what was happening, jumped at the robber's face and spat and hissed and scratched at him. This frightened the robber dreadfully, and away he ran to the back door. But there the dog jumped up and bit him in the leg. And as he was crossing over the yard, the donkey kicked him. And the rooster, who had been awakened by the noise, crowed loudly with all his might, Cock-a-doodle-doo! Cock-a-doodle-doo! At this, the terrified robber ran back as fast as he could to his comrades and told the captain, the boss robber, how a horrible witch had got into the house and had spat at him and hissed and scratched his face with her long bony fingers. How a goblin, with a knife in his hand, had hidden behind the door and stabbed him in the leg. How an ugly, big-eared monster stood in the yard and struck him with a club. And how the devil had sat upon the top of the house and cried out, Catch the dummy-doo! Catch the dummy-doo! After this, those robbers never dared to go back to the house. But the musicians were so pleased with their quarters and liked the house so much that they took up their abode there. And there they live still, I dare say, till this very day.